Think of some of the great engineers in history. Do you ever wonder what they were like as kids? The Wright brothers, first in flight. Jobs and Wozniak building the future of Apple computers in a garage. Mary Barra, CEO of General Motors. Gwen Shotwell, president of SpaceX. Linda Zhang, team lead for the development of the F-150 Lightning. And Gregory Robinson, program director for the James Webb Space Telescope at NASA. I've always thought of these people as the great engineers and inventors that they are, but they had to start somewhere. This is weird. I thought we were getting real kids. Poor college kids, that's all we can afford. Great, great. Uh, no, no, it's fine. A true artist doesn't blame his tools. Children have this innate sense of curiosity. They live in a world of possibilities and wonder. That sense of wonder is an invitation to explore the world around us, to seek out new opportunities, and to ask big questions. Consider this very scientific graph. On the y-axis, we have the scale of curiosity, and on the x-axis, we have time. Most of us follow this path. It's as if the older we get, the less curious we become. What if we could flip this? What if the more we learn, the more our sense of wonder increased? If asking what if is the heartbeat of curiosity, then curiosity is the lifeblood of research. Doing research pushes the limits of science and technology, creating new business opportunities and solutions that can change the environment. What if we could build bridges with ultra lightweight materials? What if we could stop human trafficking using game theory? What if we could print organs tailor-made to your body on demand? What if we could deliver life-saving medical supplies to remote places with drones? Those are the questions people like Dr. Ken Van Truren are trying to answer at Baylor University. There's a lot being done with drone delivery and it'll only get better uh, as we improve the vehicles and the propulsion systems for those. This is Dr. Ken Van Truren at Baylor University. So Dr. Ken, what are you working on? In our lab, we're working on making quiet and efficient propellers. If you look around at uh, things that are happening, you see drones, and who hasn't heard a drone overhead, right? They sound like a swarm of angry bees. We're looking at unmanned aerial systems applications. We're also looking at uh, urban air mobility move going on, where we're gonna use air taxis in cities to move around. All of these vehicles use propellers. These things have to coexist with people. They have to be around people, and people are annoyed by noise. And so we want them to be quiet for that reason. You don't want to be woken up on a Saturday morning by a delivery drone at 6 a.m., right? This is more efficient. I can fly longer. I can fly longer distances. I can hover for longer times. And that makes this very, very beneficial for the sound and the efficiency of the propeller. There's one more what-if question to ask. What if you were a part of it? What would it do for your skill set, your portfolio, your mindset, your engineering career? What would it do for your passions? What would it do for the good of humanity? Just ask Eli. Hey, Eli, how's your resume looking? Great. Are you making connections across the courses you're taking? Yep. Staying curious? Mm-hmm. Nice. And what if more people thought this way? Would that change the world? Oh, for sure. My last semesters, I worked on CAR T cell therapy, which is a type of therapy for cancer. This research on CAR T cell therapy, or just cancer research in general, will enable us to save so many lives that could have been lost. So we're working in a structural testing lab where we're making concrete beams. Uh, the main goal is to replace steel cables, which is the tried and true method, with carbon fiber cables. Carbon fiber can go longer. Uh, it doesn't corrode, it doesn't rust, it doesn't lose strength. And so what we do is we put it through any kind of scenario and see how it acts so that you know, it can be trusted to be put in the field. Um, right now I am working on the process of biodiesel and kind of working on ways to make it more of an eco-friendly process. Fuel runs our world, it runs our economy. Doing our part in any single way that we can like make the process more environmentally friendly for future generations to be able to have 
a healthy world would be really important. Well, right now I'm working on what I call the corrective look ahead road profiling system for active suspension applications. I call it a, an, a mechatronic eyeball for a vehicle system so that it can actually see oncoming obstacles. The main goal is to make uh, the suspension systems actuate more effectively and just improve handling and comfort. The chemical engineering department was approached by a former Rose Holman alum and they wanted us to help them design a, a vegan ice cream that could be made without any additional chemical additives. I have been working on developing a recipe th for that, both through researching and working in the food lab. We're looking at um, C. elegans, which is a nematode, and we're looking at the ways that uh, we can affect its behavior, its aging, and uh, its uh, neural connectivity and we're trying to see if we can find correlates in humans. My research is to uh, analyze the amount of sewage that is dumped into the Wabash River after major storm events. This research allows us to help the environment because right now the current wastewater treatment system is very much harming the local wildlife, the plants and the fish that are in the river. Are you learning to wonder or are you unlearning it? Curiosity drives us. It took our grandparents' generation to the moon and it's making ideas we never thought possible, well, possible, like the AI-generated images in this video or the Whisper Quiet drones Dr. Ken is working on. So what makes you curious? All of those great engineers coupled their curiosity with their engineering skill set. They asked the right questions to seek out opportunities that made an impact, and you can do it too. Is there something you're curious about that might warrant further investigation through research? Are you ready to be part of the next big discovery that improves people's lives? There are lots of ways to get started in research on your campus. Do a quick search on your university website. Your university may even have fellowship programs or an entire office dedicated to undergraduate research. Or talk to your favorite professor or academic advisor about their research today.